Russia sent more troops, tanks and military vehicles into eastern Ukraine today to support pro-Russian rebels. After 18 years in power, this was Vladimir Putin reminding Russians that their country is a world power once again. The strength of its conventional military on full display in Syria, he said, its nuclear capabilities now soon to be more than a match for U.S. might. It's almost impossible to imagine. It's almost like we've been asleep, like Rip Van Winkle. You know, wake up and realize we're back in the same situation again. The Cold War is back, with a vengeance, but with a difference. The mechanisms and the safeguards to manage the risks of escalation that existed in the past no longer seem to be present. Me очень смущает и я откровенно говоря реагирую это болезненно на эту ситуацию. С такой, с такими жертвами, с такими усилиями мы все-таки избавились от холодной войны. We are today inexplicably recreating the conditions of the Cold War. We must wake up. It's clear that we're going through a period of extreme disorder in global affairs. Things are changing. Great powers are rising and falling. What William Perry is uh, reminding us now is a rapidly growing fear of total unpredictability and uncertainty of development. And this fear is fueled not only by Putin, not only by Kim Jong-un or another Ahmadinejad. It is fueled by the US administration. It is fueled by totally unguided processes in Europe. Political system in Europe is collapsing. This is fueled by something happening in the Middle East which no one can rightly identify. I think it's a very dangerous situation that we're facing right now in Syria with the U.S. military forces uh, really being uh, very close territorially to where the Russian military forces are based. It's not quite clear what the rules are when Russia becomes militarily involved in Syria and we are also militarily involved in Syria and you can, you can lengthen that list. We're facing a new technological landscape, just as those who first grappled with nuclear strategy and the search for stability did uh, in the 1950s. This is a real era of danger that we haven't seen in quite some time. When we're looking at the question of the attempts to affect public opinion on Facebook or on Twitter, those kinds of activities were often committed by Soviet KGB forces. The situation with the U.S.-Russia relations in the cyber domain is deeply unsatisfactory. But it's also that globally this whole domain is a wild west. It's a playground for politicians of all of the countries, uh, for the military, for the intelligence services, uh, and there is no rules of the road. But of course the politics must be shaped by the technical characteristics. I mean, arms control in the Cold War was fundamentally based on a recognition by both sides of the, of the awesome power of nuclear weapons. And I think now we just have to equally recognize the awesome power that computers add on top of nuclear weapons. What's been lost in the last five or six years is a willingness or even an ability to be introspective, to think about your own role in what has gone wrong. That's simply the other side of blaming the other side, nearly 100% for what's gone wrong. When it comes to the question of Russian involvement and interference in the U.S. elections and the risk that not only are they continuing to do it today, but they will do it in future elections, that becomes a key issue. It is not simply a separate, somewhat disembodied issue that has our Congress and our media up in arms. It is now a basic issue in the relationship that has risen to the same level as Ukraine or Syria. I'm very skeptical about the possibility to put one nation in another nation's shoes because public opinion, public consciousness is being created through centuries. Ну, а 
Cut to this one, Jonah Kennedy. So let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct attention to our common interests and the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. I do think that it is possible to have a relationship, a U.S.-Russian relationship, where there are any number of uh, aspects we can work on together, whether it's fighting terrorism or dealing with climate change or dealing with a variety of issues that don't pit us against each other and then recognize the fact that there are some issues we'll never agree on. Що можна себе щасливити тим, що ти сьогодні можеш одолеть, потенціально продовжити. Ні, зараз це не вийде. Ні у кого. Що це на цьому направлі? Ми погубимо всіх, і планету погубимо.